Okay, since everybody is here, uh, let's uh, start uh, uh, our session uh, for today. So uh, I would like to welcome uh, all the participants uh, from uh, UM campus. Uh, it is, hi, good morning, everyone. So it is uh, a mixture of students and also lecturers. So uh, we have um, uh, a, a wide um, participants uh, today uh, to discuss this quite an important uh, issue and quite an important development, I would say, on the advent of a new uh, AI-based chat that uh, have been commented and argued uh, quite a lot since its inception in 2000, uh, in late 2022, uh, just last November. Uh, and it has sort of garnered uh, really high interest, especially uh, on uh, the area of education and its impact on education. So uh, we have uh, today uh, our uh, panel speakers that we invite from uh, different uh, aspects of the university. We have um, uh, Prof. Lu uh, Chu Kiong who uh, is the representative for UM management. And then we also have uh, from Pakao, uh, Dr. Uh, Paul uh, Lipi, uh, who is the treasurer of uh, Pakao. Uh, and we also have uh, with us a uh, student representative, uh, uh, president of uh, UMSU, uh, Mr. Uh, Oi Goshen. And uh, we have from Factor of Education, uh, also, I would say re representing the human arts and humanities, uh, Dr. Azmawati uh, Muhammad. And uh, we have um, from Victor um, uh, uh, with uh, Chi Wai uh, from Faculty of uh, Medicine. And we have um, uh, Dr. Azno Khalid uh, from uh, FSKTM. So we have a, a vast area of I would say expertise and also experience in uh, doing uh, or in uh, in education and represents, I would say, um, a vast area of uh, the, the campus itself. So uh, the reason why we bring uh, together these uh, groups of fan panels is we want to uh, embark on a wider conversation uh, about the impact and the promise and the potential or maybe the threat of uh, AI based chat tools like chat GPT and um, in a few weeks we are going to see the, the Google version which is BART isn't it uh, and how this is going to impact higher education uh, teaching and learning especially uh, through the, the learning process that the students uh, will be uh, having to uh, undergo and for us also for, for, for lecturers to uh, look at how do we uh, perceive and how do we use the uh, AI in our teaching and learning. So it is going to be uh, an impactful, uh, or I would say, webinar. Uh, and this will serve the, I would say, the first step before we look at proposing to the management what to, what do we do uh, with regards to uh, the uh, chat GPT and the like. Okay, so um, and uh, in order for us to have that, uh, that conversation, uh, I've prepared a few questions for all the panels that we have here. And we are going to start with uh, Prof. Lu first. Uh, uh, on the, uh, so to be the, the voice of the management, to talk about so what are uh, the uh, the kind of uh, use or, or the kind of impact that that chat GPT will have um, in uh, our uh, higher education. So um, the question to you, uh, Prof. Lu, uh, how can the use of uh, chat GPT or other AI tools uh, in higher education could it support or could it undermine our mission and goals of uh, the university 
and what are the implications uh, of this for the future of uh, higher education in Malaysia and as well in uh, UM? Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Prof Zahir and panels and all the uh, attendants. Uh, I just uh, probably I can start with by giving a very macro view. Uh, ChatGPT actually is a kind of a generative AI tools, right? Uh, so generative AI tool uh, can can be described as an algorithm that can be used to create new content. For example, audio, code, image, text. Uh, but for specific, uh, specific case, uh, ChatGPT is much focused producing uh, generative text. So uh, the process is generative, meaning that uh, it is not derived from a proven procedure or, or from first principle, for example. All right. So the, the generative process itself is not explainable, in fact. And sometimes it can it may give a wrong answer. So uh, as with any tech, uh, I will see that uh, ChatGPT uh, present both opportunities and challenges to the uh, user, especially children, uh, students and uh, lecturers. Uh, it can be a useful tool to complement students' learning. For example, a student can use ChatGPT to explain concept, to generate questions for practice, and so on. As we know that our UN mission is pushing the boundary of knowledge and nurturing aspiring leaders. So in my opinion, the use of ChatGPT can support the mission and goals of UM by providing an additional tool for students to enhance their learning experience. And the lecturer can embrace ChatGPT technology as a teaching instrument. However, the misuse of ChatGPT can undermine the mission and goals of UM. For example, students student should not use ChatGPT on its own as a substitute for guidance by their lecturer, as ChatGPT we know can sometimes provide inaccurate and biased output, and the student have to critically assess the accuracy and the objectivity of its output. Um, the implication uh, for the future of higher education, uh, I think it's very much depend on how ChatGPT is used. ChatGPT can be useful too for learning only when a student have mastered the fundamental concepts and thinking skill. So uh, while we're exploring how ChatGPT can enhance student learning experience, it is important to ensure students do not become over reliant on them and understand the limits of this technology. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I mean, I, I agree with uh, what you said uh, just now about uh, students having to master the fundamental concepts because otherwise you don't know whether the, the information or the the answers given by chat GPT whether it's correct or, or is is or is useful or not. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's move on to um, uh, representative from Pakau, uh, Doctor um, Paul. So. Uh, the question to you is uh, on the ethics of um, uh, chat GPT. So uh, what ethical consideration do you think uh, that we need to consider when we start to use uh, these AI tools like chat GPT and BART um, in uh, our teaching and learning uh, and for the students in their, in their uh, research, in their work, in, the, in their assignment submission? And how do we as a campus community, uh, ensure a responsible implementation. Thank you, Dr. Jahil, and uh, good morning to all the panels and also the audience. And this is a very tough question, actually, because uh, I just embarked with these tools recently and uh, I not really download and use it, but uh, in general, right, the ethical considerations that need to be considered when using these AI tools like ChatGPT, maybe in higher education, we have to consider something which is like uh, privacy and security. Okay. So you would directly bawa. Oh, apa, 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 apa. I just oh, so much that, that's um, Let me uh, hold on for a while. Let me meet the person. Why? I cannot hear. Oh, no, no, we have to. Hello. Hey, okay. Okay, that's the All right, can I continue? Yeah. All right. Okay. 
for, for ethical considerations, uh, there are several points that I have uh, gathered. The first one will be regarding about privacy and security. As an AI tools, right, they can actually process a lot of data, including sensitive information, for example, like personal information. So it's important to ensure that privacy and security measures are in place to protect such information. For example, if an AI tool is used to analyze students' performance data, and it's important to ensure that this type of data right, is stored securely and only authorized personnel have access to it. The second point that I can think of is uh, what Prof Lu has mentioned just now, bias and fairness. Since that AI tools can perpetuate and amplify biases in the data set they are trained, and it can lead to unfair or uh, discriminatory outcomes. For example, if an AI tool is used to make uh, something which is like emissions decisions, it's important to ensure that that tool right, has been trained on diverse sets of data rather than using a specific set of data sets to prevent uh, what we call unfair disadvantage to a certain group of students. Uh, the third point that I can think of is regarding about the transparency and explainability because uh, AI tools, as we know, is too complicated, difficult to understand and not transparent at all. And it might lead to the lack of trust in the process of decisions making. Uh, for example, if an AI tool is used to recommend courses to the students, it's important to uh, ensure that such tools provide explanations of why certain courses are recommended so that the students can easily understand how the tools arrive with uh, those recommendations. And in terms of uh, responsibilities and accountability, as an AI tool, you have to be able to make decisions that real, uh, according to the real world consequences. Therefore, it's important to ensure that responsibilities for those decisions is clearly defined and the mechanisms are placed to the responsible, accountable. And for example, if AI tools is make hiring decisions, so it's important to ensure that the tools is held at the same standard of accountability as human hiring managers. And last, uh, what we call the, the ethical considerations should be the human oversight. As we know, AI tools should not replace human decisions making entirely as humans can provide important context and judgment that AI tools might not be able to replicate. For example, uh, if the AI tools is used to grade students' assessment, so it's important to ensure that that's human oversight to ensure that grade assigns are fair and appropriate. So in terms of ensuring the responsibilities of implementing the AI tools in UM, for example, there are some potential steps that maybe UM should consider. For example, the university can develop clear guidelines and policies around the use of the AI tools, including ethical considerations and best practices. After that, these guidelines and policy can be recommended to the staff, faculty, and students to ensure that everyone is actually aware of the expectations and requirements of such tools. The second uh, point that I can think of is the university can regulate audits on the tools or the AI tools or chat GPT in use to ensure that they use it ethically and in accordance with the guidelines and policies given. And the third point will be provide training. The university can provide training to the staff, faculties and students on the ethical considerations of such tools or the implementation of the tools including the topic like privacy and security, bias and fairness, transparency and explainability, responsibilities and accountability, and finally, uh, human oversight. <coughs> oversight. <coughs> Sorry for that. Um, the fourth point that I can think of will be <coughs> the universities have to ensure that the developments of the AI tools involve diverse perspectives and voices to minimize the risk of perpetuating biases or discriminations. This can involve partnering with organizations to promote diverse in uh, technologies or prioritizing diverse hiring practices for AI tools development teams. Finally, uh, maybe UM should include also stakeholders in making the decisions. Uh, as we know, 
uh, these AI tools, right, uh, not be able to make decisions accordingly, and uh, it can actually oversee certain points that human beings that can see because uh, the AI tools are based on learning experience and training data sets that they have. So it's not like uh, human beings, they are based on the experience, what they get from years and so forth. So by taking these steps, I believe UM can ensure that the AI tools are implemented responsibly, ethically, minimizing the risk of negative consequences and maximizing the potential benefits for staff, faculty, and students. All right, so uh, what I'm hearing from you is, uh, it looks like Pekaum is uh, supportive. Uh, if UM were to uh, write or come up with the guidelines or policy with regards to the use of a chat GPT. To, to us, right, GPT. it's not, uh, sorry for that. To us, right, it's not support or not to support because as we know, right, like internet, it has the good uh, perspective and also bad perspective. It depends on the people who use it. People can make crimes if you're using internet, right? People can make use of good things by using the internet as well. So similarly, these kinds of tools, right, can also have both sides. So it depends on how we put it, how they use it. Okay, so, uh, yeah, because you were talking about uh, guidelines and policies, you know, so, so it, it seems to be uh, if uh, UM were to sort of come up with the guideline, then, uh, uh, and, and I think... Uh, uh, because you, the question given to me is yeah. to ensure yeah, 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 the yeah. responsibilities of implementation. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, those yeah. are the good things that we have to come up with, yeah, rather than... Okay. Yeah, rather than telling the bad things that you should not do this and that. Yeah, agree. Um, okay, so uh, thank you for that. So we'll, we'll uh, put that uh, uh, question uh, a little bit further later. So um, well, let's move on to um, um, Mr. Ui, uh, who's um, uh, the president of uh, UM Student Union. So uh, the, the question uh, to you uh, still on the potential uh, of um, chat GPT. In what ways do you think that uh, using chat GPT and other AI tools, uh, the generative AI tools like this, could impact your uh, learning experience uh, positively and as well as negatively? All right, thank you, Doctor, for the question. Um, truth be told, I think as of now, most students would say that they haven't really been utilizing chat GPT or any form of the generative AI as of yet because all this only picked up traction around the uh, last few weeks. And so um, my knowledge of, regarding ChatGPT is just from like some, some past tampering. But from what I see as of now, uh, ChatGPT in the short term, it, it helps in two aspects. Number one is uh, it's another alternative for a smart engine like Google search and so on. Um, and the other thing that it may help uh, in certain, because it's a generative AI, so it may help with um, uh, certain um, simple and manual tasks, like maybe helping to uh, draft cover letters, uh, uh, making targeted C CVs and so on. Um, but um, I think as of now, at least as of now, because we don't know how things will develop moving forward, it, it could develop very fast in the next few years. But um, as of now, there's not really much, too much utility out of it just yet, I would say, personally, because um, because, for example, uh, when we talk about search engine, what we want is accuracy. And I see that uh, in, in the polls, a lot of people have mentioned accuracy. But actually, ChatGPT isn't really as accurate as we think uh, from my past tempering over the past few weeks, as well as from my reading. Uh, because it's a generative AI, uh, accuracy is actually its secondary goal. Its primary goal is just to create um, simple and sound text so I even tried it. Uh, I, I used uh, my year two assignment example where we did. Uh, uh, it was land law, and then it was regard. Uh, our lecturer gave us a case study on uh, the, the Rauk Duran Pahang case, and I just randomly just tried, just tested around with ChatGPT. I put that in. It actually came out with the wrong facts regarding the dispute. It, it actually said that oh, it was a dispute between farmers and a mining company, which is not true because there was no involvement of a mining company, and that just serves to show that uh, ChatGPT isn't really a sound um, alternative as a smart engine as of yet, but we're not, we're not sure how things will be moving forward. So um, 
just to just to wrap up, I think we can discuss this further later on in the Q&A or whatsoever. The positive impact is that it's a good alternative for a smart engine, uh, for simple research, for the most surface kind of research, uh, maybe for outlining and so on. But if it's definitely not geared for more in-depth research and uh, it can help with some simple writing, but ultimately uh, it's not going to help very much because yeah, you cannot do in-depth research and the writing is just very limited. It's just limited to a few paragraphs. Uh, I don't think it will go far enough for, uh, for, for to cause too much impact to assignment writing and so on. But I, I, I think I can elaborate more on this later on in the second part of the question. Yep, thank you. All right, thank you very much. So uh, you, you were saying just now, uh, even for the students, it will take uh, around one to two uh, semesters probably for students to get their hang of uh, what we can do um, but i think uh, for for lecturers it's going to take longer uh, instead of semesters it's probably take it's going to take um, the vast majority of lecturers probably to, to three years to see what it what it can do and another probably uh, three to four years for everybody to understand what is it uh, and for the university to actually be able to have something concrete about it uh, and yeah i mean that's how things like move uh, in in the higher education anyway uh, and, and thank you for your answer just now so now we move on to um our education expert uh, uh, dr Mawati, uh, because uh, uh, chat gpt it actually has quite an impact in uh, the way the education is uh, being delivered to students isn't it so uh, the, the question to you is, how do we balance um, the, the use of these AI tools like ChatGPT uh, with uh, a personal interaction and human touch that we see in the classroom? And what do you see uh, the role of us lecturers in and sort of AI enhanced education system? All right. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning uh, to Dr. Zairuddin, um, fellow um, speakers and also the audience. Uh, well, there are two parts to the question, yeah, and I've listened to what Dr. Paul mentioned about the ethics where we can not undermine the human interactions and also I was very um, happy to hear from Mr. Uy as well as a student um, and I'm going to explain here. So when we talk about um, personal interaction and human touch, well, that is nothing that beats the educators, uh, what they call that educators personal touch in the classroom. So, however, we have to agree um, that um, global adoption of technology in education is transforming the way we teach and learn and AI now is uh, used to customize experiences. Well, uh, when we talk about um, how we can have the personal interactions, yeah, we can possibly after listening to what we mentioned earlier, so I think um, a chat GPT could be used as a starting point where students could actually generate a simple answer. Yeah, but like what we've heard earlier, uh, we know that um, GPT generated essays that is just surface uh, level analysis and it could be uh, sometimes redundant or probably not accurate. So this is a part where educators can also play a role and uh, can work together with the students and um, to um, how to say to basically um you know acquire them to actually sit down together and um you know um, to do a deeper level of uh, analysis and I, I do think that it could be also useful for the chat gpt yeah, to suggest activities um well if you can possibly ask uh, possibly to generate yeah the lesson plans uh, for example with certain standards but uh, what i could see that if um, possibly if it's not suitable for certain um, uh, subjects or areas that you are in, you can actually regenerate another one and this time around you could actually include activities. But what is more important is to basically um, include that personal interactions, the observations that we do as educators. And it's not just relying on the AI itself. Another thing that I think is fairly important is the process. You need to also focus on the process rather on the final product. So we could 
um, where we are very concerned about plagiarism, about how students could basically use and, you know, take it right direct from ChatGPT. But we could also use tools like Google Docs to track the development and evolution of the student product. So I think if you basically interacted with your students and um, get to know each one of them individually and in terms of how they could, you know, um, their presentation in class. So I think that would be a good part to also help thread um, how they could actually do their work. So the second part of the question that was um, actually posted uh, were, uh, was, uh, what do you see as the role of lecturer yeah, in the AI enhanced education system? So I think, um, I do believe we are like the sage on the stage, where in the traditional classroom, the educator is the primary source of information and the learners passively received it. And we've seen uh, uh, numerous times where it could actually be boring. Well, the, the technology, ChatGPT, could actually help um, the students to access to information and where we now can be, uh, you know, the educator's role can now shift to the guide on the side. So I see myself personally as the guide on the side where I do believe that my students could take more responsibility for their own learning uh, using technology to gather relevant information. And um, I think um, this could actually be the new way where we could foster more interaction in smaller groups. And if you look in a different perspective, that chat GPT could be useful. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Zahe. Okay, sorry, I, I was muted. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for that uh, answer, uh, for the response. And uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, uh, although we are doing the OBE of Cambridge Education, the main bulk of the um, learning is actually still a process, isn't it? A process for us, exactly. the educators, and especially the, for the, the learners. It's a process for the learners. And uh, rightly so, when we look at the process, uh, you can actually use ChatGPT to uh, uh, enhance, I would say, uh, the process itself. So yes, the, the use of it. Um, uh, thank you uh, very much. So uh, let's move on to uh, Prof. Victor. So Prof. Victor is a known um, early adopter of uh, ChatGPT. So uh, I've known him, uh, I know, I've known uh, Prof. Victor personally for many years. I know he's uh, always at the edge of, of technology. Uh, and obviously, ChatGPT is something that he would have picked up very, very early on. So um, my, my question to you uh, is, what role do you see uh, uh, like ChatGPT uh, play to shape the higher education, the, the future of higher education? And what do you, uh, in your opinion, what do you think that you, UM uh, should do to prepare, to integrate ChatGPT or any, any of this technology into our teaching and learning? Thank you very much, uh, uh, right. uh, Dr. Zahid. Can you hear me? Yep. All right. Okay. The, the, the interesting thing is, uh, I just went on ChatGPT today, and there's actually an enhanced system where you pay 20 USD, and you basically you can get better services. Currently, there is basically a bottleneck in ChatGPT because of the, of the amount of data that you need to process, and the amount of data and the computer computing power that needs to run Run chat GPT. And also, also we look at if you look at how chat GPT has penetrated the, the system, actually it reached 100 million users very quickly compared to what we have before. I started, I started off in UM as a as a student, as a master student in 2000. And during that time, the the the, the university still teach us how to actually go to library and search for books in the library system. All right. And currently, we don't have to do that. We don't even know what actually goes in the library to search, to, to search for library books. And we understand that in the current UM status, a uh, library has been evolving into not an uh, area where you, where you receive technology or receive information, uh, or search for information, but more, more of an area where you get together and discuss and, and, and get, to, get to know each other and more, more uh, advancedly. So if you look at chat GPT per se, I have, done, I have basically uh, accidentally went through uh, into it while basically uh, spending my time watching YouTube. I always like to watch YouTube and 
And I, I watch YouTube, I get, I get all these things coming up. And one of the things was ChatGPT. GPT. It was in November 2022. So when I started start working on it, I found that it is basically a very interactive type of learning and, and tools. Basically, you can ask, ask them and continuously they will give you a better answer. I think Bob Blue, Bob Blue has been highlighted a very important point. Is that if, you have, if we teach our students to do the correct thing and to, to ask the correct question and to, and to think, Correctly, then 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 ChatGPT can be a very good tool for them to actually progress in their career, to advance in their career. So the role the role of the role of these tools basically like what we have like search, and if 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 any of you remember uh, Yahoo search, okay, it's basically quite a long time ago. I think I think I remember that, and of course there's Likers, and then we all the other search search area around search search uh what, but currently there's only the main, the major one is basically Google search, and we call it Google. But the idea is that in, in going forward, if we don't embrace technology and we don't teach our students what, and we just like afraid that technology will basically cause plagiarism, technology will basically uh, cause uh, allow the student to basically cheat in their in their in their in their work. Then we actually basically uh, then helping our our student for progressing in their career. And for, for using using tools that basically they can enhance their the way they write. I think I think our student representative is very, very interesting. Is that you, can, you, can, you can use the tools actually for writing uh sim simple things. And of course, at the end, what is the university then? What do we need from a university? We need a the university is a place for us to generate ideas, it's a place for us to uh, teach our students how to think critically and how to use tools critically. I think that that moving forward we need need to do that. And I don't think I don't think we should basically be afraid of any of the uh, artificial intelligence coming forward. Uh, ChatGPT is just one of them. And of course, there's other kind of research tools that are basically based on AI. Currently, there's a lot of tools based on AI that that you can actually generate a lot of things based on AI, but not or not using only ChatGPT. Because I had, I had, I taught that to my student once to look at what kind of tools they can use to basically help them. We as an educator, we should basically be at the forefront of what is available and how can we use those tools to enhance our students' learning. Because we are preparing our students not for what we know now, but for what we don't know in the future. Thank you. Design. All right, I, I like the, the, the last um, um, point just now. We we are preparing our students for uh, the future instead of um, we are preparing them for uh, what we know now. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you uh, wholeheartedly. And uh, you pointed out another important aspect, I would say, I would say in, in chat GPT, uh, as uh, what uh, Prof. Lu was saying just now. Uh, use chat gpt to get the students to ask better questions isn't it and uh, and to to do that the students will need to have some fundamental knowledge for that uh, for, for that to happen um okay so uh interesting um so let's uh, move on to um our ai expert so dr Adnol is uh, the head of artificial intelligence uh, at fsktm so uh, the question uh, to you uh, is, uh, I think it will be uh, a little bit simple, but it's, it's, it's quite important, is how can UM integrate uh, AI tool uh, like ChatGPT into teaching and learning to improve student outcome? So it's, uh, it's a follow-up question from uh, what we discussed with um, uh, Prof. Victor just now. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Zahir. Uh, Prof. Victor, we meet again, eh? And uh, fellow panels. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yes, for... yes, we meet again. Meet again. <laughs> I think so, I think one of one of the thing, one of the things I have fun with is I, I basically I'm one of the interviewer for promotion and admission into uh -huh. in, as a lecturer as a into the into the uh, what we call that. And would basically also also like to like to do it. I started asking the question to people, especially from people coming to join Prof. Do they know? Do they know what ChatGPT or not? Starting in November, 
and most of them actually have a job in. So, so I think I think that 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 basically is interesting. Then I'm so sorry about that. Please put out my name. I just want to think about that. I think probably will remember what I do all the time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> All right, continue. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm I'm a big fan of Prof uh, Victor and also Prof Lu. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So uh, I would like to take a, a step backward a bit. Okay. So for me, uh, I think most of us have read this book, Who Moved My Cheese, by Spencer Johnson. Right. So basically, it's a story about change management because you you start smelling the cheese is disappearing. The cheese is uh, going stale. So chat GPT is essentially it's like a wake up call to the education industry. OK, what it promotes is another dynamic way for teaching and learning. But what it also means is, you know, it also promotes for self guided learning. OK, what's lacking in this current education system is the role that, uh, you know, to validate the learning experience, the answers lah, that is generated by the student that is still at this moment uh, kind of guarded by the university because we are protected by the barriers created by our own culture. You know, For you to enter the industry, the industry requires for you to come with a certification okay, uh, from the university and whatnot. Okay? But assuming that we take away this normal normal uh, culture there's no longer you know the need for credentials or accreditation and it's purely skill based which is happening these days you know happening these days you know so if for example a person from my faculty that graduates is purely evaluated based on creating successful programs applications okay and they don't care whether that person graduate from UM and whatnot, okay? Then our role as educator at the university is pretty much at being threatened, okay? Uh, because I beg to differ a bit. I, I like to backtrack a bit because I think the representative from uh, Mr. Owe and also from Victor saying that it's a mere tool. But for me, it's a paradigm shift in, ed in education because the fact is there has been multiple studies, okay? That GPT has passed the MBA test from the Wharton Business School, okay, and it has been used to pass micro microbiology quizzes, okay. So when you look at the structure of how data is being presented, there's this concept called uh, DIKW: data being the lowest level, information, knowledge, and wisdom, okay. Data, information, knowledge, and wisdom: DIKW uh, pyramid, okay. So most people operate on the knowledge level. Some people, they operate at the wisdom, especially for decision making. OK, but when you look at ChatGPT, if you are able to have the skill, just like using, like what Prabhita said, like Mr. Ui said, if you are skillful enough in using a Google search engine, you will find what you want. If you are skillful enough in using ChatGPT, you will be able to generate the answer that you want. OK, so in essence, check GPT and compass the thing that you can actually achieve at the knowledge level. OK, not a lot of work requires wisdom. Wisdom is making decision. But knowledge is most of the thing that you need. OK, it doesn't replace skill like doctors and whatnot. But knowledge is required to make decisions. OK, uh, so what I'm saying is, OK, it is a, it's more it's more than just another search engine. It is something that we have to pay attention carefully because the technology is going to keep and improving. The current limitation is the the result may be biased. Okay, uh, it's unvalidated. It cannot produce uh, produce citation and references. Okay, but the thing is, it's only a matter of time before the technology behind it is able to catch up and provide the necessary citation and references, OK? So I did something that is very ironic, OK? We were given the questions beforehand. So the question was, how can UM effectively integrate AI tools like ChatGPT into their teaching and learning strategies to improve student outcome? So I asked ChatGPT, what should university do? 
Okay, so, and the answer given is very logical. Let me read out. Eh? Let me read out. Okay, so develop a clear plan before integrating AI tools like ChatGPT. It is important to develop a clear plan. So what it means is for the university to come up with a clear guideline on the usage of ChatGPT, right? Right now, there's no clear guideline on how to use ChatGPT for providing the teaching and learning materials. Okay, the second one is to train the academic staff, the student, okay, how to ethically and morally use ChatGPT. The third one, this all come from ChatGPT. I'm just elaborating. Okay, the third one is ensuring data privacy and security, because ultimately, when you ask something on ChatGPT, you have to log in. You're disclosing your personal information. Okay, so when we become a subscriber of this technology, right? We are actually exposing our personal information, you know. So this is basically we are sharing our valuable data about our UN students. We are which we consider the best university in Malaysia of what we are paying attention to. Okay, and this can be used in multiple ways. Okay, and then okay, encourage collaboration. Okay, so you use ChatGPT to facilitate better collaboration between the students, the faculty members, and whatnot. And finally. OK, what ChatGPT does, actually, I cross check my answer with ChatGPT before I ask. Lah. And almost the same, almost the same. OK, so what, what I suggest is almost the same with ChatGPT. Okay? So monitor and evaluate as effectiveness. OK, so basically when you now there should be like a mechanism. Lah, OK, so take home exam is going to be harder for admissions because, you know, uh, normally, you know, when we do the Bloom taxonomy of synthesis and at the highest level is for you to synthesis new theory and whatnot, right? But you also test on the knowledge part. But testing on the knowledge part is going to be harder now because how do you validate whether that something is created by the student, okay? So my suggestion is instead of just, you know, uh, using, we should add, add another dimension to the assessment, the impact or the effort put into the, the assignment because it's very seldom that we quantify effort, right? Uh, okay, so this is just uh, uh, an example. Uh. But these are some tips, okay? But uh, I started, let me just recap a bit. So I'm just uh, uh, trying to say that we shouldn't take this lightly. It's a big wake up call, okay, for all of us, the education industry and the uh, Different types of industries can be properly disrupted, lah. Uh, I mean, uh, by this uh, proper usage of this technology, and you know, I mean, uh, how to integrate. Uh, those are the steps that I mentioned just now. So, thank you so much. Uh, back to you, Dr. Dai. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Azinon. So, yeah, I, I I like what you said just now about uh, we are actually helping to train ChatGPT as a as a uh, generative AI engine, isn't it? Uh, by putting in our questions, not just as uh, putting in our information, but uh, from for for ChatGPT to know where we are or what we do, uh, and the kind of questions that we ask, it's actually training the the, the engine itself. Um, and uh, another thing, uh, another I would say important aspect that you put in just now is it now it makes the assessment a bit more critical and we need to start looking at measuring something that is very hard to measure things like effort and also impact isn't it um, uh, in our assessment of the students um, outcome okay so so that's actually the the end of our first round uh, of uh, questions so uh, for our participants there will be um, there will be another round of questioning by, by myself uh, to our, our panels. And then there will be a third round where we open the floor to questions uh, from um, the uh, participants. So let's move on to the, the second round. And for the second round, um, uh, I would like to ask um, uh, the education expert first before we move on to, 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 to for, for the to the other uh, panels. So um, going back to Dr. Almawati, uh, 
just now we were talking about assessment and uh, identity of assessment. So how do we uh, redesign assessment to make sure that students' academic integrity is maintained and the students are confident with the authenticity of a student submission? Okay, thank you, Dr. Zairuddin. So when we talk about academic integrity, yeah, so it's a major concern. Yeah, everywhere we go, um, especially in UM, academic integrity is one thing that we uh, really focus on. Yeah. So how what is academic uh, integrity? So basically, is uh, to ensure the quality of the certification process. What we want is basically to maintain the value of skills here yeah, of our students, the knowledge and the character earned in the degree process. And uh, we wanted to, again, guards against corruption in work because um, when we talk about corruption, so this is what I believe philosophically. So when you cheat in um, school, when you cheat in education, it's like cheating in life. So ethical fitness is again, um, takes practice. And how do we basically um, reduce, yeah, reduce the opportunities and reasons for academic misconduct? So I would like, to just share that I do believe that ensuring assessments which contains clearly worded questions and instructions um, and also ensuring that assignments are specific and not really open to interactions and um, when we listen to what Mr. Oi mentioned earlier and by Dr. Agsno, I think when we talk about uh, the creating the questions and preparing the assignments, it requires now a higher order thinking skills yeah, to include that in our assessments. And probably one of the ways is also to create series of shorter, lower stakes assessment tests. And, um, you know, one of the things that could possibly be effective is to ask students to uh, provide evidence of their learning or you know their draft their outlines this is to also prevent that academic uh, to ensure that academic integrity earlier I would in what I do basically because I'm teaching counseling subjects here so we explicitly link classroom activities to assessments so we have lots of class discussions so this could be one of the ways that we could conduct um, and um, besides just lecture materials. So um, one of the ways that we also do is experiential learning. Yeah. And um, I think using AI as part of teaching, um, uh, personalized learning. Yeah. So these interested students or learners will be motivated and um, they will also honor uh, the time that they spend in class. So besides that, I again, earlier I mentioned about focus on learning as process and not just the product. So when we talk about assessment for learning, um, focusing on formative assessment, for example, so we need to focus on how we basically self, uh, scaffold uh, our assignments. Yeah, um, For example, um, where we could actually, you know, require probably uh, bibliographies before the research paper, maybe. So we could actually include in terms of our um, uh, discussions, uh, exercises in the curriculum of the study itself. And again, experiential learning is one way. And um, besides that, we could also use a variety of assessments, including oral exams, just to make sure that it's not just relying on, you know, um, um, uh, papers at the end of the semester, like exams, yeah? And uh, I think we need to also revisit at the end of the day the significance of uh, academic integrity throughout the course, uh, particularly before evaluations. Um, like um, what I'm trying to say here is could provide more time for quizzes and not less, and I offer extensions for, you know, to decrease stress. And we also have to look into the well-being of the students um, because that's now one of the um, interesting issues, yeah? Students um, experiencing stress, anxiety and depression. And uh, my suggestion is also to avoid pre-made uh, test banks because um, these are targeted questions and they could just, you know, like what you said, um, uh, chat GPT is generative. So it's also based on us contributing to it. So I also do believe that, um, uh, remember that uh, nothing is actually cheat proof. So if possible, encourage informal resolution through a conversation with the student. So, um, um, last but not least, what I wanted to say is um, basically if we could follow through 
you know, uh, follow through what, um, you know, the students do. And because we are actually quite close to the students, we could actually take back. And like I said, I am not against ChatGPT, but again, how do we make sure that the assessment and the academic integrity is being focused on? And uh, that is another thing that we need to discuss, uh, especially in terms of the guidelines that we need to start, you know, thinking of. Because I do believe that ChatGPT is going to be one of the, uh, you know, it could be one of the most used uh, besides Google. Thank you, Dr. Zahe. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Alon. So I'm hearing from you is uh, uh, that uh, there are ways that we can make sure that assessments are authentic. Uh, uh, and you. one of the uh, examples that you say is, is an oral assessment. But uh, of course, we need to uh, redesign that if we have like 100 people, 100 students, isn't it? Exactly, in our yeah. So, so for small classes, uh, it will be yeah, doable, but I, for classes with yeah, like probably it, it also, yeah, it also have to focus on the course itself, the implementations of the course, yeah? Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, and uh, I like uh, the idea of learning, uh, the learn, uh, linking the learning pattern uh, right with the assessment right away. So uh, that will ensure that um, uh, students um, will uh, need to be quick on their food isn't it? And, and not rely on objectivity that much. Um, okay, so uh, thank you for that. So uh, let's uh, move to um, uh, Prof. Victor. So uh, my question to you is, uh, just now we, we, we do talk about um, ethical consideration for uh, students, isn't it? So um, uh, for lecturers, so what are the potential risks or ethical, ethical consideration for educators that they need to be aware of when using a chat GPT in your classroom teaching? And how do we address this? I think the, the idea is that uh, for lecturers, actually, there's a lot of things that people can more, I think more lecturers use chat GPT to them in teaching. Because, uh, as I learned from uh, some speakers today, all right. But the I think I think this is, this is at the end is ethical consideration is very very broad in the context that what do you mean by ethical ethical issue? Ethical issue means that you take other people's idea and you and you sell it, sell it as your own. But if 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 the, if the if the idea is yours, then how do you how are you going to generate that idea using using uh, ChatGPT or any other tools? They, they, you know, I think a lot of things are mentioned by by uh, the, the, the different people here, right? And you talk about there's currently uh, ChatGPT does not does not uh, provide bibliography, but actually there are a lot of other AI tools actually provide bibliography that basically I have used that before as as some of the tools that actually provide bibliography and even summarize can can summarize your reading for you, so you can just put in in a paper into one of the AI tools and they will summarize for you. And that summary can be used in your in your write-up. But that takes more time than just than just a chat GPT where you basically don't have to do it. And and if you look at if you were following chat GPT the development over the past few, not just past week, not past week, actually uh, Bing Bing Chat GPT has been has been uh, integrated into Bing and we we're using Bing from uh, Microsoft. Actually there are generations of uh, tools. So the, the, the issue of ethical consideration from the perspective of education, I think I think we what first we need to do is we need to understand that we need to need to educate our educator what they need to they need to learn and how how are they how they supposed to follow how they are how they going to keep their themselves in the forefront of education because there's a lot of things happening in UN even even the directive that we should have open book examination has been putting a lot of stress in a lot of people that that basically they don't understand because because as I think I think the cheese the cheese um, perspective from is basically very 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 interesting. We don't have our cheese anymore. There's no, no more cheese for you to eat anymore. Of course, but the, the idea is as as an educator, what knowledge and how far ahead do you need to be? Uh, about, about your about your student, or is it just that 
you need to understand the concept of the principle of knowledge or the principle of a theoretical framework. Especially if you talk about you talk about sociology. Sociology there's a lot of theoretical framework that ChatGPT would not be able to be able to uh, discuss properly with you. So all those things, I think each of the educator need to identify their strength and just continue on their strength. And one size does not fit all. That's the mo most important part. And when you am when you am trying to implement something like open book examination and try to fit into every single single uh, faculty, every single individual, it causes a lot of stress and anxiety. And that that is the, that is the thing that we need to understand. And can we have more integrated uh, kind, of, kind of learning? And that is where ethical issue would basically be that we need to develop on that. We need to teach our educator what what is what to do and how to do it correctly. And yet the second thing we need to do is we should not treat every single educator or lecturer or professor within UM that they are the same person and and they are they need they need to do the same thing to, to show that they are good. No, each one of us is basically different. That's what makes us beautiful. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Prof. Victor. So um, your idea here is, um, uh, the main idea is uh, educating the educators. Uh, of course, I, I totally agree with that. Um, and that's what we do in, in TEDx uh, all this while. Uh, trying to help our educators to um, uh, educate them to become uh, better educators. And the second message uh, that I get is, um, um, don't ask the elephant to climb the tree because the elephants are good at something else. All right. OK, so uh, next we move on to uh, Prof. Uh, Lu uh, as the uh, representative of uh, UM's management. And the question to you, uh, again, um, still around the ethics uh, of ChatGPT. So uh, what are the ethical implications uh, when we use uh, ChatGPT in the total, the bigger higher education system, and how do we ensure that uh, this kind of technology are used in the way it, that it aligns with our values and principles as academics? Okay, uh, thanks again, uh, Dr. Zahir. I think uh, just now, Prof. Victor, Prof. Uh, Asmawati has already addressed uh, quite quite important points already and also the countermeasure that we can take uh, for the how to address the plagiarism and the, how to improve our teaching uh, teaching pedagogy. Uh, now, maybe I would like to highlight something maybe have to pay attention also is about uh, the IP ownership, ownership rights. OK, uh, UM, we have an IP policy. We understand we have, uh, but now so far, I think we should uh, I think we should revisit the IP policy guideline also. Uh, how to consider uh, the what we call the ideas generate or the pro uh, the program generated by ChatGPT, for example. Uh, so the the only the IP ownership right belongs to who, right? Because now I can see that the potential threat is the copyright uh, may not long longer can protect perfectly. Uh, the inventor anymore because ChatGPT can always reproduce the same thing with different expression. So even we copyright our invention, uh, it may not help anymore. So I think this is the first point uh, I need to bring the attention to university. Uh, second is uh, the necessity of introducing AI ethics uh, in university subject, I think. Uh, now we are facing just uh, you know the first wave of ChatGPT. I think I believe there will be uh, some other new AI genetic tools coming coming up in the next wave. <laughs> so we must be prepared to uh, defend ourselves and to embrace the new wave. Uh, so it will be good to introduce the AI ethics uh, across the university uh, so that the student can learn, can understand in more detail um, in depth about know how to uh, benefit the AI technology at the same time 
uh, they can defend uh, the integrity, right, themselves. Okay, that's my point. Thank you. All right. So, yeah, I think um, uh, the AI ethics can be one of the key courses uh, subject, isn't it? Uh, yes. And can be taught to students as well. And uh, there's a, uh, I would say that the good uh, training as well for uh, educators. And uh, what I've read, uh, I've read, I think, a few weeks ago, uh, uh, the general nature has produced uh, uh, a guideline, an advisory on uh, the use of uh, AI in general papers. And uh, basically, they were saying that uh, AI cannot be the author because they, they can't be taken responsible for whatever they produce uh, in, in the paper. So I, I think that uh, would uh, fit into the wider discussion on uh, the use of um, uh, AI in uh, as, as academics because we, we write journals as well. That is something that uh, we need to think about as well. All right, uh, let's move on to um, uh, Pekaum. And so, because Pekaum uh, represents the academic, um, I would say, um, the academics in uh, UM. Uh, and uh, there is this uh, discussion that uh, although we are talking about um, uh, about teaching and learning, but university itself is actually a social a social entity where students and lecturers to socialize and uh, builds builds community uh, around an intellect intellect community or intellectual community. So um, the the question to Pegao is: uh, In what ways uh, do you think that uh, the use of the, JP, the chat GPT in higher education? Uh, change the nature of student engagement and interaction with uh, the lecturers and also uh, with other students, of course. And how do universities ensure that um, the chat GPT technology is used in a way that it promotes uh, this social interaction and also community building within the university? Thank you, Dr. Zahil. Um, actually, per count, I not represent only for academic staff, but you also represent support staff and also students. So for those uh, support staff and also students that have problems, right, they can always come to programs. We will always provide any suggestions or recommendations. All right. Um, as you can see, that the question posted right, is actually going towards the positive way of using ChatGPT. It's not like we are or programs at the stance of actually uh, trying to buy the concepts of ChatGPT to be implemented in uh, UM or higher educations. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned just now, I actually doesn't use ChatGPT and I do not actually quite know about how the background mechanism and so forth, all the knowledge I actually I get from uh, TikToks and also from the website. And uh, from actually I learned a lot today from all the what we call panels. And what I can say is uh, if ChatGPT right, is able to provide real time response and so forth, so it can actually provide the students with an immediate access of the information and resources. And as we can see that it's potentially be able to reduce the time that the students require when they do searching, especially for the answers. And also like just now, uh, Dr. Asnos, right? He actually used ChatGPT to search the questions that posted by uh, Dr. Zahil. So it's immediately they can get the results. And we have to go and search from Google and compile the information. And you can see that the time taken is quite long compared to Dr. Asno. And the second point should be um, if someone's managed to, uh, this, these are the things that I get today. If someone or students or the learners managed to actually come up with their own or personalize the questions well and put it into the chat GPT, right, they can actually tailor uh, a custom answers for them so that it can make use of these custom answers, right, to help them to learn, to experience, or I can put it like they can actually personalize their learning experience using the Chat GPT itself. And Chat GPT actually, if not mistaken, is designed for communications. It's like you are talking to a series, and this series is more intelligence. And it actually, it can, if someone managed to utilize it effectively, it can actually uh, promote interactive classroom discussions, for example, like 
uh, the students can use ChatGPT to uh, communicate and get the answers from uh, the ChatGPTs. And then if the answer is not correct, then the question, I mean, the students can actually question back. And maybe the ChatGPT learns, and then after that, it will be more intelligent and give the correct answers or more in depth answers based on the search that they can crawl from the internet. And finally, what I can see, this is the not so good, uh, uh, what we call points, because uh, after we or the students attached with ChatGPT, right, it actually reduces the face to face interactions among uh, maybe the teachers or other learners in the classroom because uh, we no longer relies on uh, what we call information or feedbacks from the other people. We just have to ask chat GPT and we can get the feedbacks immediately. So to ensure that this technology to be used in a way that promotes social learning and community building, uh, maybe universities can uh, encourage collaborations between students and faculty in the use of chat GPT by fostering a I mean, a sense of uh, communities and shared learning. And besides that, university can incorporate ChatGPT in group projects and also collaborative assignments by providing opportunities for students to interact and work together. And at the same time, right, the teachers can also, or the lecturers can also guide them so they can have more face-to-face -face, uh, interactions rather than just restricted to ChatGPT and also themselves. And I think that that's the only things that I can think of for now. Okay, so uh, thank you very much uh, for that. So it's uh, uh, yeah, I I I, sh I I agree with you that it be, uh, when you have uh, uh, like another person for the students to talk to, it's going to be very hard for them to socialize, isn't it? Um, uh, because they are they started to rely with uh, their friends, so um, uh, with ChatGPT rather than their friends, so. Uh, and, and I would argue that there will not be too many people like that, but there is a risk that uh, increasingly students may choose to ask um, a machine rather than to ask their friends or their lecturers. And that, I think, a risk that we uh, need to um, be aware of. So what, what is your response to that? Uh, this is arguable. As we know, right, once mobile phone has been implemented, right, everybody is actually looking at the mobile phones. When you go out for gatherings, right, people are looking at the mobile phone rather than talking to you. Right? Yeah. So what happens if the mobile phone now can communicate with you? So do you still want to check with your friends? No more. Maybe you check through your mobile phone as well. Send a message to your friend rather than just having a face-to-face -face communication. Okay. All right. So uh, uh, I... I hear, uh, I can see uh, who is uh, laughing there. So, um, do you want to uh, sort of say something on, on about that? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I partially do agree with what what Doctor said earlier. It's it's a risk that 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 moving forward, who knows how things will be lah. <laughs> but I I don't really have much to add to that lah. Yeah. All right. So, because, uh, uh, when, when when I look at um, the the way that we can use ChatGPT uh, just now, uh, 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 even at the other panel, uh, Doctor Paul, uh, uh, Doctor Azri, Doctor Azwati, yes, uh, and um, Doctor Victor were talking about um, uh, getting the students to ask uh, better questions. You can have, even now see in like Instagram reels and TikToks how to uh, prompt uh, to engineer the prompt. Uh, for chat GPT to ask better questions. And uh, if students choose to sort of, uh, look at that rather than look at the, um, the, the dancing pictures, then of course they will have the, the skills to ask uh, good questions in chat GPT. Okay, so uh, moving on to uh, Ui because uh, you're already uh, on right now. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, the uh, future uh, because after graduation you're going to sort of um, uh, look forward I would say. so uh, my, my question to you is how do you think uh, the increasing use of um, chat GPT or AI tools uh, will affect the job market and also import from employment opportunities for you uh, students okay um, basically here, I need to uh, quote back what Dr. Asnu said earlier. Uh, Dr. Asnu said that um, 
ChatGPT is a paradigm shift. I wholeheartedly agree. Um, and with that, uh, this paradigm shift is definitely going to impact how the job market will be moving forward. But, um, but again, um, I would say that it's, it doesn't really change the job market as much because we are already facing a very changing job market, which is not really stable in terms of what kind of jobs will there be in the future. It, I, I would say that um, ChatGPT and the future AI tools that will come out in the future, they are already part, they are just a further materialization of a mega trend, the utilization of big data, uh, automation. It's it's basically a materialization of IR 4.0. So moving forward, I personally think that um, it's the same. The job market is still uh, uh, pointing towards automation. So if you are dealing with jobs that are repetitive, uh, those are going to be going to basically be replaced by um, machines, AI, instead of relying on manpower. However, uh, and, and I, I would suggest that uh, with ChatGPT, right, because it is a generative AI, it's a language model. So I would say that perhaps students in FBL, uh, uh, Bahasa and Linguistic, uh, especially those who are going into uh, copywriting, translation, they themselves would face extra threat from current developments. Um, as uh, meanwhile, for other uh, humanity-based courses like law, um, even 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 business finance, even maybe even finance, um, it's the same idea. Um, if you are doing something in a, in a relatively new field of uh, new field, I think that's fine because they don't really have a lot of data or research to actually plug in into whatsoever to act as input to plug into whatsoever database that they have. But if it's something that's um, that's already been settled and, and has been utilized for many, many years in the past, um, um, perhaps certain finance models uh, um, or maybe for certain laws that which have really set, settled, uh, all those would face increasing compression. And yeah, so I think uh, I, I and myself do not know what kind of advice to give. I, I personally would say that on a personal level, the idea would be that uh, we need to shift away from this kind of fields into other more growing and newer fields. Uh, um, yeah, but uh, in terms of academics wise, I, I don't really see how, um, because the idea of education here, like like what um, Dr. Uh, Prof. Victor said earlier, is to come out with new ideas and so on. So that, that also correlates to what I've been saying earlier. But sometimes I do understand that certain courses, they need to teach you the fundamentals. And so it's really hard for you to not entirely talk about certain parts of education, which is already settled, like, uh, <laughs> for example, land law. So I, what, what, th that's why I, I use the case study of my, my past uh, assignment of land law to, to plug it into ChatGPT to see how things work. And um, from what I see is that uh, moving forward, uh, I, I'll go a little bit into how, um, into what uh, Dr. Asmawati shared, shared earlier regarding how to um, make assessments better. I would say that, um, yeah, it, it, like what Dr. said, it has to be very specific. Uh, for example, the earlier scenario where I said, uh, you need to put in case studies uh, certain scenarios and a lot of the past um, essay questions, especially those where you um, certain lecturers would tend to like uh, cite um, uh, certain excerpts from past academic articles and then ask students to elaborate more on uh, what they've learned. Uh, these kinds are uh, these kind of questions may be increasingly dangerous because as I would I would imagine that as ChatGPT progresses, uh, they might be more capable of um, coming out with better and better uh, responses that may jeopardize academic integrity. But when it, it's uh, questions that are tied to certain recent developments or tied to case studies with, uh, that are not real in nature, uh, these kind of things may be able to test the student's understanding better. And um, the risk of um, ChatGPT being able to give uh, a, a close to perfect response is actually lower, I would suggest that. And also I would suggest, uh, I, I do agree with Dr. Asmawati earlier about, about the idea of having Viva, uh, although I do understand, I also, but again, it's very tedious. Uh, 
just to share, one of my lecturers did actually run a Viva test with us and our class was about a class of 100. So I can imagine that she went through a lot of tedious work to assess us uh, by doing the Viva. But I, I, I do think that's a way to actually assess uh, students properly, um, just, just to share. And um, moving forward, maybe uh, although I am a person that likes to do personal assignments, but moving forward, there really needs to be more I don't know, maybe lecturers may want to think about uh, is it really still feasible to do personal assignments instead of collaborative ones? Because the idea is if you are having more collaborative type of assessments, uh, um, this is just a suggestion. Uh, yeah, but when you use generative AI as a team, uh, if, if the idea is if all the students uh, uh, cheat via ChatGPT, although they are working on a collaborative assessment, then the whole write-up flow might not uh, necessarily jive. Uh, so when their flow is not the same, uh, maybe from there you'll be, uh, lecturers may be able to detect that there's, that there's been something fishy and maybe you need to relook into this group's work and so on. And um, just to further share another experience I had with ChatGPT while I was just testing with it, uh, I did try to plug in one of my uh, uh, evidence law assessments that I did earlier this semester. I put it in. Uh, it actually came out with some very rather accurate uh, responses. So sometimes it's accurate, sometimes it's not. But uh, just to, take to share that maybe more emphasis should also be placed on uh, other smaller points because when ChatGPT is being accurate, um, uh, it, it one, one flaw or one gap that is existing as of now, we're not sure moving forward how things will be, but they are not very capable of providing um, additional points that uh, that people, not people, but the system tends to neglect smaller points. For example, uh, uh, if you ask a question, they will give you the most important and largest points, but they will miss out a lot of smaller points. So uh, in future assessments, if students are capable of showing that uh, they are, pers they are capable of elaborating on smaller points. And uh, yeah, this may also be a sign that they have put thoughts into whatsoever assessment that they're doing and uh, may also show that they're actually doing uh, original work instead of relying on, uh, on, 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 uh, on whatsoever AI technology. Um, yeah, I think that's for now. Uh, we can discuss later more in the Q&A session. Thank you. All right, thank you um, very much, Hui. Um, so uh, you even give us a, 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 a insight into how students uh, like do work, and uh, you are suggesting that uh, more group work, uh, collaborative work, uh, uh, needs to be done uh, moving forward in the future. And I think that prompts us uh, as educators to look at the assessment and also the, uh, the, the learning process that students will need to uh, undergo, uh, even in the classroom and also assessment. So uh, uh, the point of redesigning our assessments uh, will, uh, I, I would say, be, be very useful for lecturers who are in the, in the session to make sure that uh, the students give or students submit an authentic uh, assessment that they do themselves. Uh, if the students are using ChatGPT, then um, uh, you need to make, we need to make sure that uh, they use it, I would say, responsibility and they have their own personal touches that shows and demonstrate that uh, students do actually get the point of the assessment and do uh, understand uh, the, the, the knowledge that the, the lecturers are trying to um, uh, get them to explore. Um, okay, so uh, I, I think uh, there is uh, one application. Um, uh, if you do, if you have known, there is an AI lawyer now. So if you try and search, do not pay. That is actually an AI application, an AI lawyer application. So uh, with it, I think um, um, people can represent themselves in court, um, uh, but there are I mean, discussions uh, around that, but uh, uh, you are free to Google it uh, and learn more about that. Okay, so um, the last uh, question uh, goes to um, our um, 
AI expert again, um, uh, Dr. Aznul. Um, so, um, and um, so full disclosure, uh, in writing the questions uh, for and preparing the questions for all the panelists, I do actually uh, go and um, ask uh, for ideas and inspiration from Chat GPT himself. So I, I type in uh, what would be the, the the appropriate question to ask uh, each and each and every single one of the panels uh, from and and you I identify uh, all of the panels as um, the management, uh, student representative, um, staff representative. Uh, uh, AI expert, uh, education expert. So, so, and those are the, those are, and the chat GPT actually lists down the, the questions. And then I just choose uh, which one uh, uh, that I like. And I always uh, make sure that, uh, because sometimes the, the, the questions are too generic. So I always put it, put some context that to make it uh, more relevant to us and also for relevant for our discussion and conversation. So uh, the last question um, uh, for you, uh, I don't know whether you've already asked this, this uh, the answer to ChatGPT uh, or not. So uh, in what ways can uh, AI, AI tools uh, to be used, uh, can be used to personalize learning experience for students? And what are the benefits and limitations uh, of this? Okay, thank you, Dr. Zahi. So I think, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just like uh, befitting uh, that we are in this forum and we we become like a, what they call first frontier user just to validate the usage of the chat GPT, the technology. But I mean, uh, I like, I mean, before answering the question, because I think in bits and pieces, the question asked by Dr. Zahi just now, basically, how can it help personalize the learning experience was answered in bits and pieces by the different panel. But I just want to like step back a bit because I like to play the devil's advocate so much, okay, so I don't know why, you know. But basically, to, to give uh, a bit of a perspective on the potential of ChatGPT. So uh, I have this statistic from Statista. So for Netflix to reach 1 million users, it took them 3.5 years. Instagram, 2.5 months. ChatGPT for 1 million users, 5 days. Only 5 days, 1 million users. Okay, what does this mean? Okay, what does this mean? So it actually correlates highly with what uh, Mr. Ui mentioned just now. The keyword that I picked up was automation of tasks. Okay, automation of tasks. So when you talk about automation of tasks, that's a whole lot of work. Okay, copy editing, even your personal assistant, okay, to, to reply your email. There's a whole load of job being affected, okay, which is translates to dollars and cents, okay. And one of the things that we, uh, university, is doing is to ensure we produce people that are marketable, and you know that actually can contribute to the society, okay. Uh, we praise ourselves to create future leaders and future thinkers, right? Uh, most of the prime ministers come from the UM even in the latest that was Yanwar Ibrahim, okay? So backtrack a bit, okay? So in terms of the dealing with ChatGPT as a technology, we need to go back to our roots, which is, I think, uh, you know, to be able to provide the fundamental basis of knowledge, okay? That is what we need to stress on, okay? What like what uh, Prof. Victor said and also uh, corroborated by a lot of the different panels. And at the same time, to be able to create future leaders and future thinkers, to ensure that the learning is uh, increased one level up, higher order thinking skills, like uh, what uh, Prof. Asmawati mentioned, to create the necessary level of wisdom, not only to be able to retrieve the knowledge, to produce knowledge, but to be able to use it to uh, achieve a high level of decision making, okay? So back to the question, okay? So how can it be used for personalized learning? Okay, so I like to start with the negative aspect first, like, of course, you know, because, you know, uh, ChatGPT is trained based on data that stops in 2021, okay? But until now, the, the algorithm is still like a secret sauce, okay? So that's why, you know, Bart is having a hard time to catch up with OpenAI, okay? They release 
uh, usage of technology, but they didn't produce the correct answer and Google share dropped. Okay. There's something in the algorithm that is a bit of a secret sauce that is not available to Google at this point. Okay. And from our research perspective, we know already. Okay. If you're a business person, you always think five steps forward, even as a researcher. Okay. You always think of what is the next research topic. So what is being presented to us right now is just a snippet of the full potential of KGBT. It's just a little thing. We are saying that, okay, you can only produce like a two, three paragraph. But the, the actual potential is it can actually digest an entire text and produce a summary and reply an email that is condensed and factually correct, okay? Uh, that may need certain, certain validation, but at least the summary, the, 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 the validation can be done a little bit uh, faster, lah, okay? So the, the full potential is much more, okay? So how we are going to use it for uh, personalized learning is, okay? So right now, we need to tackle not only the answers provided, okay? So when we see personalized learning, okay, we need to assess how the students pose the questions to chat GPT. Because to be able to ask questions, you need to have fundamental knowledge okay you need to be able to ans ask the right questions to be able to get to elicit the right answers right okay so the personalized learning happen when you are able to gauge the level of mastery of the students on the fundamental knowledge based on the question asked to JGBT. so now the answer becomes like a secondary output the first output is actually how you pose the question to chat GPT, indicating your understanding of the subject matter. Okay, so that's where what you call personalized learning can happen, you know. So you, you look at the level of questions being asked. Is it high level? Because you know, I mean, if, even when you profile a person, when you talk, I mean, as an educator, we have a responsibility to profile our students because we need to know the, their level of understanding. That's what we do. Uh, okay. That's what we do. We need to know this guy. Does he understand a lot? Does he does he understand uh, like an intermediate level? So previously we were just basing that on the answering sheet, but now we have to look at both ends. The entire process of generating an answer should be evaluated. Okay, and this is the process where we can actually create personalized education. Of course, I can give the the answers given by ChatGPT for this particular question, but this is my answer, lah. Okay, so. All right. Uh, so with that, I return the session back to Dr. Zahid. All right. So I, I really like the answer very much. It's very genuine. And uh, this, uh, this idea of being able to ask good questions has been around actually for quite a, while, uh, a long time in education, but it has not gained much traction uh, uh, from uh, educators themselves. So if you, if you uh, read uh, literatures, uh, being able to ask good questions, especially by the students. Uh, uh, literature which uh, says that, uh, suggests that uh, shows students really understood uh, the, the knowledge because uh, as rightly uh, that Dr. Azlo said, uh, unless you understand, you can't ask questions. You can ask questions, but it, it, it's going to be a very low level questions. So once you are able to ask high level questions that means you are you really understood understood the topic and uh, another thing that i would suggest that uh, uh, if you are able to sort of um, explain to a layman your area of expertise uh, successfully it shows also that you understood and uh, and that that paradigm shift of uh, the new paradigm of uh, assessment where you assess the questions being answered. I think that is something that we uh, need to start to embrace and we, uh, and that will give the authenticity uh, in uh, the assessment uh, of uh, the students, uh, the students work. Okay, so uh, that's the end of the, uh, the, the two rounds of questioning by panels. So now we move on to the last uh, half hour where we uh, invite 
uh, our participants to ask a question to any of the panels. Uh, you can also ask uh, this, the, the same question to uh, a number of panels, it's okay. Uh, so uh, we can have this um, better conversation on uh, the, the situation or the, the, poten the potential of ChatGPT in a uh, UM, uh, very, very specifically, but also in higher education um, uh, as uh, generally. So uh, I open the uh, session on the floor to uh, our participants. We have, uh, right now we have um, 140 participants um, uh, in the session and uh, for those who want to ask the question, just click on raise their hand and then um, uh, when I call your name, you can uh, speak up uh, and ask your questions. Is, is that okay? All right, so let's uh, see the raise of hand. So let's uh, get um, uh, Chia Chi Kwan uh, to uh, open your camera uh, and start as asking your question. Uh, your, your microphone is muted. Hello, can you hear my voice? Yes, I can hear you. Can, can you okay. uh, please introduce yourself first? Okay, uh, my name is Jia. Uh, I'm from Education Faculty UM. Uh, I have two questions to ask. So the first question is, what is the role of teacher in the future in Malaysia context? As from my observation, without facts, we are still in exam-oriented learning culture. So if you read the last week addressed by Google CEO, he claimed that the current advancement of technology is even faster than no law, which is doubled up every six months. And Google but haven't released. And ChatGPT4 going to release this year, which they claim is 600 times more parameter than current one. Current one is already had more than billion. So in another words, the accuracy is getting more and more with the reinforced, I mean, with their way of learning. So my question is, what is our role as a teacher or lecturer five years from now? And I believe after five years, chat GPT, I mean, AI chatbot going to be here and there. It's very common. And second question is, in new state, higher education, how can we address the gap of those who can access to technology by us and those who cannot access to technology? I mean, the post underprivileged group or those live in place without internet. Because if you look at the projections, what going to happen is the gap of knowledge, the gap of economic is going bigger and bigger if this continue to going on. So how university can address the gap? Because the outcome will be the huge gap of the uh, what we call the our economy sectors, the house how I mean the wealthy status of the nation. It's something going to happen with this. Yeah, this is my two questions. Okay, so uh, is there any particular uh, panel do you want to ask this question or uh, you want me to choose the, the, the answer or the, the, the one who answers? Uh, open to anyone. Okay, open to anyone. All right. So uh, uh, can we have uh, uh, someone uh, who, can ask, that's who, who can answer the first question? So the first question is what is the role of teachers in the future, five years down the line? Where we where you have chat GPT two three four five. So okay, the first question. Uh, right. perhaps, yeah. Oh, sorry. Perhaps yeah. I can just answer that very briefly. Yeah. Uh, looking at technology, like I said, is something that we have to embrace and. Um, um, I, I think we could actually divide into two major tasks in technology-based kind of education. 
So the first one is probably in terms of planning and providing um, the content for learners. And I think pandemic COVID-19, COVID-19 pandemic have actually taught us great lessons on how we actually use assessment, online assessments. Well, like I said, that formerly we are like the sage, right? And um, um, online assessment have been very, very useful. However, it has its setback. So that's the first one, planning and providing electronic content. And the second one is to provide, uh, creating a good relationship between teachers or rather the educators and the learners itself, where the students will actually participate in the knowledge created by, uh, you know, um, whatever sources that we have actually gotten, but from the educators themselves. And I think um, for us to actually help facilitate learning processes and um, to provide timely feedback, this is very important because the educators, us, the lecturers, we provide good um, results and help strengthen the motivation of the students here. I remember that during COVID-19, when uh, if we are just basing on the internet, or rather the technology itself, we have actually experienced a lot of students who, um, you know, um, face stress and anxiety and some of them actually delved into depression. So it is very important for us to have to provide the emotional mode in class. So this is the kind of motivation that I think is very important. So in every kind of educational systems, I think that our role cannot be ignored simply uh, because of the, you know, simply because that is very important to, to provide the motivation and to provide the guide to the students. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, uh, Dr. Victor, your, your crystal ball five years from now, role of educators. Basically, basically the role of educators uh, should, not, should not change even from now. Educators are not here to, to help to teach knowledge, but educators are here to teach to teach people how to think. I have been, I have been stretching, we have been stretching on that. And by teaching people how to think and how to, how to assess knowledge, that basically is what, is what we need to do. I think it wouldn't change the way, the way we do it. But what would change is what, the, what students are actually enrolling for. So university has two base, basic main roles. If you look at our university currently, we are basically training students to go into a barrier kind of job, like doctors, pharmacists, architects, lawyers, where there's a barrier. Once you enter the barrier, it's very difficult for, for technology to actually break the barrier. So those are the barrier type of job that's, that is available. The more, but those are the jobs that are going to be much more uh, stable, but there are jobs that are not barrier based, which is basically your IT job. That is basically is going to be very very advanced, and the and that is that is what we need we need to think about. But my my uh, simple point is we don't teach students what knowledge we teach them how to think. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Um, very uh, uh, condensed answer. Teach students. Can I can I add on? Yep. Please. I think lecturers right or those professionals. Uh, what we call people, right? They cannot be replaced. As what we have now is like, if you want to learn some things, right? We can learn online now. So they we no not we no longer need anyone to learn something. We can learn it from YouTube, from any resources available resources. But what make it different is we cannot be professional. Although we have the knowledge, but we cannot become a teacher. We cannot teach people. We are limited. We have limited uh, what we call skill sets in order to conduct those uh, professionals work so lecturers or what we call the educators cannot be replaced this is what i'm going to express oh, okay all right so yeah i mean uh, to 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 add on from from that discussion um, i remember a few years back where you have a case uh, uh somebody uh, learned from youtube to become a dentist isn't it and uh, started a clinic uh, but then uh, because of just they have the technical skills, but they don't have the other skills, uh, ended up um, the, the person who like, received uh, uh, treatment at that clinic, uh, their, their teeth all fall, fall out. Uh, so, yeah, you, you, uh, that is something that uh, we need to uh, be very careful about when, when talking about uh, uh, how AI then uh, sort of bridge that, that gap. Okay, so... Thank you very much. So uh, let's 
ask, um, let's get uh, any questions from the floor. Actually, Pakam have a questions for UI management, but not from I mean, uh, not for Portflow because as we know, right now today we can use the uh, Chat GPT to produce answers. At what a uh, lots of uh, panels also agree that a good question is a must in order to produce the questions. But when we have distant learnings and online assessment, all those good questions will actually be posted by the lecturers. We just have to use the good questions to get what the answers that we require. So how the UN management actually trying to gather these online assessments and so forth. As we know, uh, QMAC also, we have different types of uh, room taxonomies. It cannot be escaped that we cannot, like we don't want to include uh, level one, level two, knowledge based questions, but we must have because this is a must when we when we establish our what we call the program. So we must have certain levels and so forth. But low level questions, right, it can be actually assessed or can be actually retrieved the answers from chat GPD now a day. So how how UM actually or how uh QMAC come up with the what we call any plans in order to countermeasure such uh, issues? Or maybe we, uh, the UN management team can discuss further. So these are the thoughts that Pakam uh, is trying to pull up. Uh, yes, uh, Prof. Lu, would you like to address that? Yeah, I think uh, definitely uh, UN management realized the importance uh, of revisit our, our, I mean, uh, many aspects, especially the ODL and RL. Um, if I can see that uh, a lot of things need to do, uh, we have to, uh, we have to uh, execute parallel in parallel. Uh, so this is about the change management. Uh, now we are facing facing the the, the wave already. Eh? Not only student, even uh, lecturer themselves. Uh, so I think one thing for sure is uh, we will embrace the technology. All right, I think, but. Uh, how to effectively embrace the technology is a question, <laughs> it's a, and it's a challenge, right? especially the ODL. Uh, because, uh, but I believe now at that, I think is uh, looking into this matter. Uh, uh, everybody is working on this, I think. Uh, but having said that, I want to add that, uh, personally, I look at the thing, this thing uh, very positively, lah, because I think this is a, a co-evolution process between technology and uh, human education. Uh, we, we already see how deep learning revolutionized AI and come to the stage that almost human like. I think it's, it is the right moment that education should undergo a better than shift itself to, in order you not know, to move forward. Right? For example, how to assess uh, critical, uh, how to assess students' uh, critical thinking level, for example, how to assess higher order thinking level, for example. So this requires a new uh, methodology a new uh, assessment method, uh, which is not really, uh, I mean, really uh, implemented fully based on our current exam based system. All right. So these are the things that we can revisit. Like, I think this is a wake up call for all, all of us. All right. I think that's my comments. OK, thank you, uh, Prof. Lu. Um, please, any more questions from the floor? Okay, so since there are no more questions, I think we can uh, end the session uh, for today. So uh, I think the Chai has the uh, same question. I think we're able to answer his own question. Is the Chai the second question? Okay, so um, uh, last question, quick round for all the uh, all the panels. Um, should we, uh, so there is this uh, poll question, uh, the last poll question, uh, 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 shall we ban ChatGPT? So a uh, quick round uh, between the panels, uh, should we ban ChatGPT, uh, Dr. Victor, Prof. Victor? Yes, no question. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I don't think we can ban ChatGPT, there's a thing that we, if we cannot ban technology, technology is here to stay. And okay. I think I think Snow wouldn't want us to ban the GPT anyway because that he wants us to basically what we need to do is basically we need to we need to embrace it and need to see how how can we actually improve on it and then 
teach more of us how to do it basically. All right, thank you. So the thing I want, the, the thing I want you and to do, you and to do is how can we be the the leader in using AI in our teaching? I think we should not, we should not, should not be a follower. We should be a leader. I think we need, we need another round of uh, of uh, uh, forum where we say how to how to make you and the leader in AI using AI in teaching and learning. Thank All you. Right. I, I I like that. I like that. Let's uh, be the leader instead. Uh, Dr. Admawati? Okay, I second what Prof. Victor said because um, it's quite new for me as well, but I do believe that it'll bring more benefits if we could actually embrace what technology is all about and especially AI. So I think it's very important for us to create clear guidelines on the possible, you know, if it actually questions the academic integrity. But otherwise, uh, I, I do believe that uh, we should explore further. Thank you. All right, Dr. Aznan, quick round from you. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I mean, I think I, think I make it clear. I think we, we should be able to, like, properly harness the power of ChatGPT, and I think I echo what Prof. Lu mentioned just now, which is uh, not only, I mean, education, because we are in this particular industry, but I think it's a wake-up call for Malaysia in the biggest sense, because this is a wave that we can't actually, you know, I mean, uh, we need to actually make make use of this opportunity to really look at it. And then uh, with the economy not being that stable at this point, OK, I think it is actually a point where the academic industry can step up OK, because we are the brains of the nation. So we should help the, the government to, to provide the directive and the policy in which uh, direction we should uh, you know, move forward to harness this kind of exponential technology. And I think I would like to highlight as well what Prof. Lu mentioned. Tech GPT is just the tip of the iceberg. OK, so this is generative AI. There's also transformer type of technology, you know, there's a lot that is coming into the picture that we are not seeing yet. Okay, okay. this is just the starting point. Okay, so that's yeah, yeah, like. yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a problem. Yeah, yeah there, there are some uh, new. I think they are coming up technology that can generate music also, uh, arts, painting. You no, know? so this will again disrupt, disrupt not only text based kind of uh, products, uh, uh, including uh, you know audio, uh, graphic, and all types of uh, for that situation. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Paul? Can you hear me? Yep. Uh, all right. I do agree with all the panels, and uh, I believe this check GPT track in future will soon will be plugged in into all the platforms, and uh, it will become a very powerful tool soon, very soon, I believe. And uh, as a, what UM uh, can do is we have to somehow right find alternative ways since that we have uh, distant learnings and we have all those take home exams and so forth now long no longer we can use those those evaluations methods anymore because uh, we provide them the questions and then from the question itself so they can actually crawl the answers using whatever tools that they required and previously it make it hard is uh, the questions is not so directly can be obtained I mean, the answer cannot be directly obtained, but now with these uh, AI tools and so forth, right, it can be manipulated and it can actually keep on training and get the better results and better answers from time to time. So it depends on what are the information that we feed to the machines. And I think it's quite a very challenging, uh, what we call, uh, situations for UN now. So uh let's let's work together rather than just prevent the technology to come in we try to make use of the technologies and how we can see what we can do for the new technologies and so forth all right and lastly uh, our student uh, wait. yeah i basically second what prof and doctor said earlier um bending it there's definitely a no-no because you'll be cutting off the students from real world developments but basically that means they'll be lagging behind all the all the other student societies in other universities and even all the other universities overseas. So yeah, we don't want to put ourselves to become like greenhouse, the flower pots in, in the greenhouses. So yeah, we, like 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 the doctors and uh, like uh, the panel said earlier, my respect, um, yeah, we need to up the game uh, in the education sector. Thank you. All right, so um, 
I think uh, it's uh, high time that we uh, sort of close the uh, the session. But before that, uh, uh, let's um, everybody uh, open up their cameras so that then we can have um, like a photo session with uh, everybody. I, uh, I see Prof Noran uh, quickly uh, turn on their uh, her camera. Prof Noran, you want you want to ask any question? <laughs> yeah, I've actually. Yeah. I've got one question to ask. Uh, okay, yeah. I'm just wondering what's the cyber security bit with regards to chat GPT? Are we revealing our you know IP address or <laughs> so what kind of threats can come with this new face of AI currently? Yeah, I think Dr. Aznol uh, might want to uh, post to anyone. Okay. Yeah, but but I think I think I'm mentioning a bit just now. So basically the data privacy and data security issue is part on parcel of the things that we need to look at uh, when we are using okay. this uh, technology. So, and I mean, it's, it's an interesting discussion because actually Prof Lu and myself, we have been discussing extensively on this topic on how to have like a complementary, uh, what do you call, not partnership, but I mean, how cybersecurity should complement the, the usage of uh, AI, you know, because the issue right now is the 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 answers provided by the model is biased, uh, it's not validated and all that because it's being trained on data that is not validated. It's training from a bunch of sources. So, okay, uh, you, you know, the elements of uh, big data, veracity and all that, you know, that's five Gs lah, and one of them is, is actually validity, okay. So cybersecurity aspect should go hand in hand with with uh, with the usage of AI. So that's, I mean, I think the the tendons can actually Google. It's like the concept of trust AI. How to be able to trust uh, the 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 output provided by AI model. And there's also like I think one of the panel mentioned about explainable factor of AI. How does it explain in generating the answer? So not only it gives you the answer, but it explains how it derived the answer. Okay. Uh, so then you will trust. For example, like on daily basis, you're using ways to drive to work, but you never ask ways. Hey, how come this road you're suggesting this road to me? <laughs> and why why are we blindly following this road? No, we never ask, but we trust blindly, right? Uh, so that's that's the thing that we should uh, play into consideration. Uh. Okay, so that's the wider discussion on um, AI, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so please open your, your cameras so that we can... Can uh, I maybe uh, add one more thing? Yes, yeah, small, small remark is about cost implication. Uh, we know that ChatGPT very soon will charge uh, for the premium version. Uh, I think cost implication, uh, so we should uh, concern about, uh, I mean, for future to move forward. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, because of they were charge, be charging, uh, it will cause some um, inequality to the excess. Uh, so if the inequality problem happen, then uh, there will be you know some social 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 problem later maybe in terms of education equality, how to address education equality. Uh, so cost implication, or we should also uh, yeah take take note on that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I remember that there's the, the second question just now by by, yeah. by, by the one who uh, asked um, the 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 gap, isn't it? The the technology gap um, uh, for those who are um, uh, have issues, um, especially on the cost part, uh, the access of technology. So, so, so for example, if, if our education we like too much on chat GPT, so are, are we able to make it sustainable? Based on the yeah. increasing cost situation, for example, yeah. No, it's cost no. The thing actually has been charged already today. There is a premium version, which costs you twenty USD per month. All right. So if yeah. not, it's not yeah. coming. It's it's already here. Yeah. The, I think I think moving forward, we also need, need to look at it from the perspective of a social sociology. How does how does AI is going to fit into our society? I think that is something that we don't really know. And that is much more, much more a big, bigger problem, not from the education perspective, but from a general, general population perspective, when they rely too much on AI, and and don't whether how can basically sociology socially how, how are we going to fit in? You know, they will basically be talking to an artificial intelligence 
instead of talking to a human being. So sociology, please, people here, please do something and then tell us what, how can we fit in, uh, in an AI society from a Malaysian perspective. So that's a, that's a research in itself. Okay, so uh, please uh, keep turning uh, on your cameras so that we can have a photo session. Uh, Umu, uh, I surrender this to you so that you can uh, take the pictures. Hi everyone, um, there's a few pages here, so keep smiling. All right, one, two, three. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone. So uh, I would like to, uh, to to end. I would thank our panels. Um, uh, for their uh, discussion, their uh, contribution to the discussion uh, uh, on um, how ChatGPT impacts us uh, in higher education and actually society as a whole uh, from the questions that we have just now. So uh, different ways for perspective, which we really, really value, uh, student union, um, our academic staff union, okay. our management and also our experts. Uh, and uh, I have no doubt that uh, the use of ChatGPT is um, has great potential uh, uh, to revolutionize uh, our teaching and learning. Uh, we, uh, our panelists, have uh, shown and discussed uh, a, a number of paradigm shifts that we need to take uh, in order for you to uh, be able to make sure that teaching and learning is done authentically. Uh, uh, the, the AI is used to promote uh, critical thinking and we need to move forward with uh, that kind of discussion. And uh, I hope the discussion has been informative for our uh, participants. Uh, it's uh, is, is especially engaging, uh, engaging for me and also uh, our audience. Uh, and uh, I hope it starts uh, or provide, provide a starting point for uh, further dialogue and conversation uh, on this topic. So uh, once again, for our uh, panel, uh, thank you very much. And for our audience, uh, thank you for your attention and so your participation. All right. So thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. One information. Basically, technology actually provides us uh, the freedom of helping this thing when I was when I'm now in KK uh, Sabah. So oh, it, doesn't, okay. it doesn't matter where you are now. You you no one knows where you are and you can just be do whatever yes. you want. I think, just, I think we can be much embrace technology. We cannot we cannot stop embracing technology. Yes. Agree. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.